Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining Mold Talks. Today, we have a very special guest. Her name is Kara. And, uh, you know, Kara, first off, I want to thank you for being vulnerable here today and sharing your story. Some of these things may not be easy to relive, but I really appreciate you doing that in terms of helping other people uh, so that, you you know, somebody has some something to relate to. Uh, you know, and, and without further ado, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and uh, let people know why you're here. All right. So I am Karen McNabb and I had the somewhat unfortunate experience to live through mold and getting sick from it. So I say somewhat unfortunate because on one hand, um, it was really expensive. It was hugely stressful and it um, pretty significantly impacted my health. Um, and then the somewhat comes in from a place of what I do for work. I'm a traditional naturopath and somatic therapist. And when I started to learn about mycotoxicity, um, things started to become really clear for a lot of clients who were struggling with chronic illness and things just weren't working. So that's what I mean when I say somewhat is now I'm able to help a lot of people as they go through their own mold battle. That is awesome that you're able to take this and actually make some good out of it and, uh, you know, now be able to help other people. That's fantastic. Um, so let's let's kind of go through the story. When when was it that you first noticed you weren't feeling well? How long ago was that? So it's been a few years um, where. I just had stuff going on that didn't make sense for how I take care of myself physically and emotionally. Um, and then when the lockdown started in 2020, I noticed a pretty significant plummet in the way that I was feeling. Even weirder symptoms, um, often not all the time. Um, but for instance, like I remember laying on my couch which is where I hung out a lot when everything shut down. That's where I was sitting to do work with clients over Zoom. That's where I would sit to read or to take a nap or watch TV so much. Um, but I noticed every time I sat on my couch, my arm would start to go numb. And wow. um, so I just, I started paying attention to little things like that. Um, and starting to kind of get concerned with these things that were happening in my body. Um, it was getting harder to breathe. My lungs were burning. Um, and I mean, I had, I could probably make a list of at least 40 symptoms that I had. Uh, so things just weren't making sense. And yeah, then wow. it was sometime um, in the summer of 2020, where Facebook gave me a group suggestion that I might like, and it was CIRS and mold illness. I'm like, what's CIRS? I've never heard of this before, and why is Facebook suggesting it to me? So I started looking it up and was shocked at all of these symptoms that I was reading that pretty much matched what I was going through. Um, and so that started to really affirm that I probably have a mold issue in my house that I have been ignoring. Um, somewhat ignoring also just, you know, not totally clear about some of the things that I should have done with some issues that I'd had in my house in the past because the people that came in to fix it never really said anything. And here's what you should probably do next, contact this person. Um, so the lack of integration between the plumber um, and other people doing work in my house, not suggesting, now I can't do this, but here's who you should contact next sort of thing. Anyway, so um, I did a few mm, uh, like mold plates, okay. mold type plates. Um, and I put those throughout a bunch of rooms in my house and most of them turned up as having like lots of mold spores. And what the kit had suggested was if you have more than four mold spores, there's likely a problem. I didn't send them in to get tested because I was already planning to hire a mold inspector, um, but just couldn't take the plunge yet. Um, mm. 
in terms of time and money. And then after probably the fifth or sixth water issue that I'd had within six or seven months, um, this time my kitchen sink exploded. My son was trying to tighten a leaky faucet and the handle broke off when I was at work. He's 13, didn't know how to turn the water off. And so it sprayed all over for 20 or 30 minutes, he said, till he could find a neighbor to help him. So mm -hmm. we had a major issue at that point, leaked all the way through to the basement. So it was then that I hired somebody to do some mold testing and um, we found lots of mold in my house. So yeah, wow. confirmation of what was happening in my body for sure. Yeah, no, that's, that is a, you know, it, very interesting story and in how things kind of turned out. Um, I, I guess the question that I have for you is that you, you started not feeling well about three years ago. So then you, at that point, you probably didn't think it was mold related, I would imagine. Um, and then Facebook recommended you join a Sears group. About how long was that? How long did it take to go from the, you know, you not feeling well to finding the Sears group and starting to maybe think that mold could be a problem? Um, so I found that group last year. So summer of 2020, um, probably like June or July. And then when my kitchen sink exploded, that was October of 2020. So it took a couple months for me to really take it seriously. Um, and I had, so I mentioned my couch earlier. So I had had a roof leak that just kept leaking. I would do things to fix it. It wouldn't fix it. Um, I had done a mold remediation in my living room probably five or six years ago. Um, but now the things that I've been learning, I'm pretty sure they didn't do an adequate remediation job. Sure. Um, so I think there's been stuff around my house probably ever since I moved in. I remember that was one of the things found in the inspection was that there was mildew in the attic and she- the Mildew. Mildew, yeah, right? Yeah. Makes you Pretty, feel safe, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's just mildew. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So I don't remember the details of that, but um, she paid to have a remediation job done and uh, when I got a new roof last winter, um, you know, we opened up the attic and you can see all of that mold. So they probably just yeah. painted over it with kills or something. And I'm sure it's still living there. Um, I'd had another point too, where I started to notice that my um, Halloween pumpkins and my kombucha scobies were getting moldy. And this was probably, I don't know, four or five years ago. So I had somebody come in and do some like fogging um, with ozone and then some chemical in a different layer in my house. And, um, but that didn't really take care of the problem because we didn't sure. know what the source was. So I've continued to have these mold issues show up in my house, but never really having anybody emphasize, like take care of the issue, figure out where it's coming from, um, aside from the roof, which some people take I just, care of. Me, can, but... can, I, can I cut you off for two seconds? I have a very okay. important question, just louder for the people in the back. So you did fogging and ozone and it did not work. I just wanna make that abundantly clear, right? Correct. And that's because they actually didn't find and remove the source. So you're cleaning up, you're trying to clean up contamination without first identifying where the sources are that mm -hmm. are creating the problem. I, I just thought it was a great opportunity to highlight that in this episode because, you know, that's one of the, probably one of the biggest questions I get asked all the time. Well, can I fog? Can I ozone? It's like, you can later. First, you got to figure out what the problem is and correct that. Otherwise, it's still going to be a problem. Um, yeah. So that was, that was awesome to, to, to kind of touch on. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that experience of paying for it and it didn't work. But um, I think it's really important that, so that others don't make that same mistake because it does sound appealing, right? I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's not intrusive. They come in, they fog. It's definitely cheaper, but it doesn't work. And that's the problem with it. Yes, I agree.
<laughs> from experience now. Yes, perfect. So, you know, um, we figured out molds impacting your health. You had, you had really, uh, it sounded like you'd really dove in and tried a bunch of different things. Um, you know, I kind of want to, before we get into like the symptoms and everything, I wanted to touch on one piece and it's different for everybody, but a lot of clients will tell me they go from like doctor to doctor to doctor to doctor. And, you know, I know what you're doing now, um, but did you ever go to different specialists and different doctors to try to figure out what was going on? Or um, did you kind of figure it out on your own or? Um, so, yeah, I definitely figured it out on my own. Um, I generally am working with different practitioners in the holistic health field. Um, so I'm usually working with at least one person um, okay. on a fairly regular basis. Um I, and, you know, honestly, I wasn't last year when I discovered all of this. I was going through some major, um, very stressful and traumatic life events. And then also so many people were closed down because of COVID. And so there was, you know, a period where I wasn't kind of leaning into the help of other people to help with my self-care, I guess. Right. Um, but in all of that... Um, whether I was working with somebody who did like somatic therapies or energy work um, or homeopathy, I, nobody was picking up on the fact that it was mold. So where I come from in my practice, um, so I really focus on the somatic therapy piece, the emotions and the belief systems that we're holding onto unconsciously, usually. And that I've seen that work so well for so many clients. So that's where I focus so much time. And so I focus that into myself as well. So as I was doing that sort of work, um, but yet nothing was really changing. That's where things became quite concerning. And then to learn that mold was at the root of all of these issues um, really helped me kind of swing from maybe spending a lot of time over here and the emotional mental areas into everything that I'd learned from naturopathy school in terms of, you know, making sure that your elimination channels are moving properly. And here's like basic minerals and supplements to support the body. Um, so it was like a spark of like, okay, these things are really important too. And I need to use yeah. both right now. Um, but I also didn't learn about mycotoxicity in school, or at least not that I remember when I was, yeah. you know, looking through some notes, I found a few things, but because it wasn't something that, you know, well, I don't know. I just didn't remember mold. To be I, you. you know, it doesn't seem to be, uh, it definitely doesn't seem to be talked about enough either. I mean, even if you had a couple of notes and maybe a couple of pages on it, it's not emphasized, right? I mean, mm -hmm. You don't go to a doctor and say, I think I have my, my, mycotoxicosis. And they're like, absolutely, sir. I know exactly what you're talking about. They're going to be like, what is that? You know, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. I think that a lot more needs to be discussed about it. Yeah. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the FDA regulates mycotoxins in our food supply. So I think it's really interesting how if they regulate in our food supply, if there's uh, capabilities to test for it, why aren't, why aren't they looking at this more as a potential problem? And, and certainly why aren't they looking at the home, right? Mm -hmm. As a potential problem, because mycotoxins, sure, it can impact food, right? If food is agriculture is in a moldy environment, um, you know, coffee beans is a big problem, the way they're yeah. kept in these dark, humid silos. Um, but in terms of homes, like homes are also a big problem, especially with all the flooding and the climate change that's happening right now. I mean, we're, I think this is a problem that's going to, going to be more of a problem in the, in the near future. Um, and I think we have to really start to look at this and address it. Um, and we certainly have the tools to do so. I mean, I, I can tell you removing mycotoxins from a home, it is very possible. It, it, is, it is easy to do once you find out where the sources are and you eradicate those. So it's interesting, um, you know, how, like you said, there, there wasn't enough emphasis there on mycotoxins at all. Yeah, with that, you know, I always think 
why isn't that happening? Um, why isn't there more knowledge around preventing this sort of stuff from happening? And I don't know about you, but I suspect that part of it is then it's going to change several industries massively. It's going to hold them accountable or keep them liable from building and construction and the insurance industry as well. Sure. The insurance coverage for mold is crap if you get any at all. I had you know, $5,000 coverage for my mold damage and it yeah. cost me you know, ten to twenty thousand dollars more. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, it's 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 really sad, but that's all going to change. I mean, their time has come. Um, it's it's it, the curtains being pulled back. Um, there's no way that they can say that mold is no n not a health hazard. Mm -hmm. That all these extensional floodings are not a big deal. There's that this this is over with. I mean, the awareness that we're creating even here today. I mean, just you and me talking today and this video going out there and people realizing that this is such a problem and this connecting with people. And these, this is the type of thing that creates that awareness. But I mean, you know, there's when I, I've been in this industry for about 10 years now, and I can tell you today, there's a lot more people aware about air quality and their health than there was 10 years ago. Um, so I'd say this is a trajectory where people are learning more and more. They're caring more and more about their health. And I think that there's, everything's going to have to change. You're right. Insurance companies, the way we build homes, the way we restore homes. I mean, even as a, as a remediator, I can tell you that the protocols for remediation are not sufficient enough at all, right? They don't talk about removing mycotoxins. They don't talk about cleaning up the spores produced by the sources of mold, right? It's just like, just, just find the source, correct the moisture problem, and you're good to go. And unfortunately for the health aspect, that's, you may be good to go for the structure. You're not good to go for the occupants. And that's really the biggest problem. And why I wrote the book, The Mold Medic is kind of to, to, to really take things to that next level where they need to be, which is really cleaning things up on this level so that these spores aren't consistently recirculating around the home, getting into the body, causing adverse health reactions. They're not getting into things like HVAC system contaminating the HVAC system, getting all over our stuff. I mean, at that point, it's like, it never ends, even if you find and solve the problem. So we, you're, you're right. I mean, it's, it's going to impact a lot of different industries, but you know what, um, such is life. And this is what we need to be a healthier civilization. So are we really going to prioritize profits over our health? I mean, at some point we have to say, well, if we don't have any health, we don't have any wealth anyway. So what's the point? Uh, I think now is the time where we start to say, this is what we demand as a society. We, we demand change. We demand improvement. And it's possible. Um, I'm writing a second book right now. I, I don't have a name for it yet, but it's going to talk about all the different industries that need to change and how they need to change and why. And I think that that can be kind of utilized as a roadmap for these bigger companies to take some accountability and responsibility. Because at the end of the day, if you have insurance and you have a mold problem and it wasn't your fault, you didn't cause it. It was an accident. It's technically a covered loss. Why isn't it covered? Right. And I think that's some of the biggest questions that we'll have to face. And honestly, I don't think that Congress knows that this is this big of a problem. And it is, um, you know, as, as you've been, been through it yourself. So, uh, you know, I thank you for bringing that up and sorry for going off on a tangent, but I, I thought it. it was really, really, you know, the, the passion that I have for all of this change is, is just boils through me. So I really appreciate that fact that you uh, recognize that too. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I will say too, your book, I read it. Um, and it's, I haven't done it yet, but I have been wanting to give it to my dad because mm. he very like, it's like, he's questioning me and doubting me all the time. Like just use bleach. I'm like, no, mm. you can't use bleach. And I, can never quite remember why, but I'm like, I just can't use it. And he was like, yeah, well, I think your sources might be wrong essentially. Or, mm. you know, like even outside of like the industry people, it's, you know, the everyday people who they were told one thing or believe one thing. And so it's hard to make change when you're dealing with somebody else who doesn't have the health issues or isn't doing the research. Yeah. And I've seen that with clients as well, yeah. where, their spouses or the parents that they're living with, um, they don't believe it. And they're not going to remediate this way. They're not going to test this way, vice versa, um, because they're not necessarily suffering from the symptoms 
or don't want to believe that they're suffering from the symptoms. So I appreciate your book because it's short and to the point and pretty yeah. easily digestible. So. Yeah, that's that's pretty much me in a nutshell. I'm short and to the point always. Uh, anyone who knows me very well knows that. I'm just very matter of fact. And when I wrote that book, I mean, I've, I've read a lot of books. And when I read these books, it's always like, man, uh, I just read 50 pages to tell me one page of information, you know, because it's like this developing story. And I, I couldn't write like that. So I was like, no, we're just going to get straight to the point. Um, this is a, you know, this is not, this is not a novel here. This is something that is uh, very important information to be digested. And yeah, I, I appreciate you pointing that out. The fact that I had to write it in simple terms, right? Because microbiology is a, is a pretty complex topic. And when you're talking about mold, which is part of microbiology, you really need to kind of make it so that people can understand it. And so a lot of analogies in there, a lot of stories that kind of tie into how to really wrap your head around how this works. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it can be, it can be difficult. And um, as far as your dad and, and the whole bleach thing, actually probably the best source for him. If you Google EPA and bleach, the EPA created a page about how you should not use bleach to, to uh, remove mold. Um, and it says in their note, dead mold may still produce allergic reaction in some, which I think is an amazing thing that, that, that they recognize. The fact that you shouldn't try to kill mold, you should just remove it. Because trying to kill it and leaving the quote unquote dead bodies in the room is still going to get into your breathing zone and enter the body. And we do not know enough about how that might impact a person. But mm -hmm. just based upon anecdotal evidence, people tend to not feel well when they're in an environment that still has mold particles in it. So <clears throat> when we look at that, you know, we want to just be thorough and say that. And I think if you tell your dad it's from the EPA, um, that may hold a lot more weight and water than, than a guy named Michael Rubino. And uh, so, you know, so go ahead and send him that. And then, yeah, also give him the book. Cause I think if he reads the EPA article and then he reads the book, I mean, the book is written in, in, in a way where you can really understand it. And I think I'll tell you what, I've never had, even in my profession where a lot of the people are, you know, been in the business 30, 35 years doing things the wrong way for 30, 35 years, People that have read the book have been like, wow, this makes a lot of sense. You know, I've, I've never really seen things put this way. And I, we've, I've had a lot of, I guess, acceptance of it, which I was expecting a little bit more of combat um, based upon, you know, new ideas. And sometimes teaching old dog new tricks is not the easiest thing to do, um, but it's, it's, it's been pretty good. So yeah, give it to your dad. Let's see what he thinks. I will. So we got, we, we got, I mean, amazingly off topic, but it, it's, it's been great. I mean, what, a, what an amazing episode so far. Um, just getting back to you and, and kind of the, the health side of things. Um, I want to know what your symptoms were. It, you don't have to list all of them, but g give me some of the main symptoms that you were experiencing. Um, I think it's really important for people to connect the symptoms to potential having environmental hazards in their environment. Yeah. Okay. Let me see what I can remember. Um, all right. So I was having like digestive issues, um, where like, I was just reacting to everything with no rhyme right. or reason food wise. Um, I had, um, like chemical sensitivity. So different smells would just like aggravate the heck out of me or feel like my throat or my lungs were burning. Um, my throat hurt often, um, felt like it was burning. It wasn't like a sore throat, strep throat sort of thing, but just like a different sort of feeling. Um, I mentioned my breathing earlier. My nervous system was quite impacted. I was so sensitive to sounds. I was really sensitive to touch. Um, so yeah, that whole being overly sensitive to just about everything from smells, touch, sounds, even sight, um, the sun was starting to hurt my eyes. Um, and before, like I never had to wear sunglasses. Um, my poor 13 year old son who, you know, likes to make weird noises. It was just too much for me. And I'm just like, you gotta quiet down um, way too often. Um, <laughs> my like moodiness levels, like there would be times where I would just like go from like zero to 60 and like 
my anger and like rage level and be like, oh my gosh, what just happened? And like reading that that's a common thing, like the mold rage symptom. Yeah. In a sense, because that wasn't a normal for me at all. And that set so like that really started when, you know, I had to stay in my house all the time when I wasn't leaving for work. Um, let's see what else. I felt um, like numbness in some parts of my body. Um, I was having lots of like musculoskeletal pain. Um, so like my joints were really achy. If I would lean on them for too long, like I mean, too long could have been like 30 seconds where it just felt like they were burning. Um, my, when I would wake up in the morning, like I would have to like kind of hobble for a few seconds. Um, other times I would just kind of feel it's almost like I felt like I was like walking around drunk, which of course I wasn't, but like in a sense where I would just kind of lose my balance a little bit and like gently bump into the wall right there. Um, let's see what else. Um, my skin was really affected. Um, most often I notice that with food sensitivity, like sugar um, and gluten. Um, so face, scalp, um, gluten and sugar would both make my, uh, like some of my finger joints hurt really bad. Um, so kind of more like an arthritic feel. Um, what else, what else? There were other things floating through my head as I was talking about the other ones. Brain fog, <laughs> inability to like access my words um, or to even like remember somebody's name sometimes. Um, fatigue, um, so tired all the time. And so I moved out of my house for five months and moved in with my parents. Um, and it was fascinating to see, like, I wasn't tired anymore. Like I was totally fine. Whereas before with the tiredness, before I knew it was mold, I was thinking like, oh, I'm just kind of tired of life. And um, I'm in a stage where parenting is harder. And that must be what's making me tired because I would notice I would get tired when I would get home. So I'd pick my son up from school, we'd get home and I'd be really tired. Well, it was mold, which was making me tired. Um, hormonal imbalances. So like my menstrual cycle was off and it be before it had always been totally normal for me. Um, so noticing changes there was concerning. Um, what else, what else? Uh, I noticed, so one of the assessment tools I use as a naturopath is called sclerology. And so it's looking at the whites of the eyes to understand what's showing up there and where it's showing up and which part of the body it's impacting. So I was noticing that my, um, I was just getting tons of red lines. Um, and that was concerning. And, and, you know, my eyes have been pretty clear before. Um, I just noticed like in my throat, like I was losing my voice. It was almost like I had laryngitis often. Um, so many symptoms. I'm sure I could rattle. Oh, this was one that I remember reading <laughs> when I learned about CIRS was like a sensation of like bugs crawling on your skin. And I experienced that often, which was really? so weird. <laughs> there were bugs there. Um, yeah. So like it just, you just felt like bugs, you felt like bugs crawling on you and then you like went to go like scratch it or something yeah. and just that's okay. There were no bugs there, like usually on my legs and it was so oh. weird and so obnoxious. Um, Wow. So luckily I don't get that anymore unless I do encounter mold. Like I'll have, you know, I have some of this stuff still, but not as intense and I'm still working on clearing some things up. Um, but definitely when I go into a moldy place, um, I feel it right away. Um, so that's kind of a bummer when I'm Do you feel that you feel that now? Um, even though like you're, you're kind of on this road to recovery here, you feel, you can tell instantly when you walk into a moldy room. Yeah. Um, maybe not instantly, but relatively instantly within like an yeah. hour. Or so, um, and well, I, that's good. At least, you know, like your body's kind of telling you like, Hey, danger, you know, you yeah, know right. you're, in a, 
you're in yeah. a bad place. I'm wondering, too, like I'm starting to wonder too, if it's like different types of molds or mycotoxins that create different symptoms, because sometimes it's just my throat hurts really bad and my chest is on fire. This weekend, I went into a hotel room and I walked in and within 30 seconds, like I could smell the mold. Um, and within 30 seconds, I got really dizzy and then I left and I was mostly okay. Um, insomnia, that was another thing I dealt with too which I just could not figure out. And I could tell you 30 different things to do to help you sleep better. And most of the time, none of them are working for me. And wow. when I, when I encounter mold now, it affects me in that way too. I don't sleep very well for the next few nights. Oh yeah. It's, I mean, it's interesting. Like even as you heal, I've heard this quite frequently, like that when you're, when you go back into that moldy environment, like you're, you get some warning signs, you have, you get start to experience some things and then it takes you a couple of days to like get back out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting that, 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 that happens to you too, because it doesn't happen for everybody. It, it really depends. And that's one of the difficult things about this. Like every single person is different. Your immune system is different. The way you're going to react is or certain things is different. So it's, it's really important to kind of look at this and, and look at each individual case and say, you know, what did they go through versus what I'm going through? And you'll kind of, kind of see some similarities, but there, there are differences there. Mm-hmm. Um, how did it impact your ability to just live life? Like every normal day activities? Um, I mean, I was, I was so tired all the time. Um, which, you know, contributed to a lot more overwhelm. Um, I, and I was feeling a lot of anxiety, which wasn't normal for me either. Um, so I just kind of shut down in the face of all of that stress. And so like just getting normal everyday house activities done was hard. Um, cooking for myself was hard. Um, so I think like basic domestic chores were most difficult, um, And generally, I also have a pattern to like endure lots of things and just kind of like push through in terms of things that I really want to do or I have to do. But when it comes to like my like internal world here in my home, it's like there's nothing that I have to do. So I'll let go of stuff that would, you know, be better off for me or for my son um, because nobody else is here. Nobody else is holding me accountable sort of thing. Um, yeah, so I, I feel like there's probably a different answer to that question that I just can't think of right now. Um, Hey, that's totally fine. You know, I mean, I I think, I think that's a good answer. Um, yeah, just, you know, just, yeah, yeah, no, I, and you know, I, I could, I could relate to the fact that it's when you're not feeling well, things pile up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's every, everything around you takes a back seat because the important stuff is like, well, I got to go to work today. I got to do this today. Right. And earn an income and pay the bills. Like everything around you kind of takes a back seat. Um, I, I've been like that too, with, with, with various things that I'm supposed to be improving upon myself and holding myself accountable for. Um, especially if, uh, you know, me personally, I think I am dealing with just the amount of exposure to mold that I have just been through the last 10 years. Um, I think, you know, I am struggling to get um, myself basically where I want to be. And, uh, you know, like everyone experiences different things for me, like weight gain has been something that like my body has built this new plateau. I look at it as a way of, of, you know, kind of insulating from the toxicity And it's like, no matter what diet I do, no matter how much exercise, I can never get it where I want it to go. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting, like the the different, different ways that each individual person deals with mold. But I think that that's personally something because I've always been, you know, pretty much in shape for the last 10 years. Um, And always, I never really changed my diet drastically. I eat pretty clean. So there really shouldn't be any reason why something something in my hormonal is definitely in balance, but it's, it's, it's interesting because, um, I think it, it could very well be related to mold, you know, and cause I can't think of any other reason why that this would happen. 
Um, but yeah, that's, no, uh, I would say that, you know, it's, it's easy for those things to take a back seat because I should be probably going to doctors, probably getting some testing done, probably trying to figure this out, but you know, I have to prioritize all this other stuff that I'm trying to do and saving other people and, and doing all these things. It's, it's hard. Um, to sit there and hold yourself accountable. So that was kind of what I was trying to tie into that. Um, do you remember like the worst day or, or maybe for you it was a time period, but like the worst time or day that, um, that you had to experience? And what was that like? Um, before I answer that question, can I jump back to what you said? Absolutely. Go ahead, jump back. Offer a little tidbit. I can do sure. that now or I can do it later. You can do it now. It's fine. Okay. So something that you could try that just came to my mind, since you're entering all of these different moly environments. Um, so there is a thing called a biophoton and it's a machine, um, uh, like a frequency based machine that can um, program remedies, usually like I'll use like homeopathic little like lactose pellets. Um, to program onto, you can program your DNA along with the environment that you are in to create an antidote for yourself. So then you would just pop those pellets in your mouth, let them dissolve, and it should stimulate your body to more easily uh, release any toxic buildup that you have. So if you, every house you go into, if you take a tissue with you and just, you know, like wave it through the air through each of the rooms, and then you put it in a little baggie, if you can find somebody locally in your area or wherever you're traveling to that has one of those machines, um, that might be really helpful to keep your body in better, you know, shape essentially. So oh, I can give you more information about like what to look for. Um, and I'm yeah, sure you should send me you should send me the information on this. <laughs> Actually, so say it one more time, just in case anyone else is interested. Yeah, it's called a biophoton. So B-I-O-P-H-O-T-O-N. So you can buy the machine yourself too. And it's like a little suitcase thing. Um, they're probably like $800 to $1,500 maybe. Or okay. maybe, more. I don't know. I don't have one myself, but I send a lot of my clients to somebody locally who has one. And they just charge like $5 for like a little dram of pellets so it's a pretty cost effective remedy as well that's interesting yeah i mean that that, that definitely sounds like an interesting biohacking technique right there and i definitely mm -hmm. want to check that out that's cool thank you for that yeah um okay so but yeah question. but your but my question for you was you know like what was the worst what was the worst day like and, and you know just if you don't mind sharing i know that may be putting you in a dark place but um i think it's it would would help people who, who could be in a similar situation um, the worst day. I don't know if I can put it down to a single day. Um, time period's fine too. If you have like a specific week or month. Yeah. I mean, it was really last year in 2020, it was the fatigue that I had, the lack of motivation, the overwhelm. And I was going through like some other major things in my life at the time too, which, we're also overwhelming and fatiguing. Um, but I do think the, um, how that issue along with what was happening in the world, like those two things were like some of the most massively stressful things that I've ever gone through. Less the COVID stuff, more the other thing. And I do think that major stress and trauma definitely contribute to shifting your body in a way to essentially turn something on to be a conducive host environmentally to pathogens in the body, whether it's a mycotoxin or a virus or whatever. Um, so as I'm navigating these other things, and then, you know, I've been in this moldy environment for years before, and yes, I had to spend more time at home to work from home, but I was also going outside more. Um, I think those two things go hand in hand where that, um, those traumatic experiences really um, kind of turned my body on to like, okay, and now because you're so stressed out, we can't deal with this toxic overload. And so now you're really gonna start to feel the symptoms. 
So, you know, it was like spring of 2020 um, where things were really the worst. And I started to get fearful, like what is going on with my health? What's wrong with me? I can't fix myself and I can always fix myself. Um, and, you know, just being really afraid that I had cancer. Um, that, that period of the fear of not knowing what was going on with me, being afraid that I had cancer um, and just kind of feeling hopeless. Like, am I ever gonna pull out of this? What can I do because nothing's working? That was the worst period for me. And once I finally yeah. figured out that this is related to mycotoxicity, um, then I had hope again. I had more of a sense of what to do. And I threw myself into massive amounts of research. So, yeah. And, and I, 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 you know, I'm sorry that you went through that. And, and um, I love the fact that you said something that, that kind of resonates with me pretty well is like, once you figured out that what it was, you were back in control, you can now do something about it. So it gives you that hope. Um, and I think that's so important for people because, you know, a lot of times people will call me and they're very frantic and they, they're they at their wits end and I'm telling them all is going to be okay. We're going to figure this out together. Um, something that I, that I haven't asked yet that I thought would be good to ask is, um, you know, you mentioned earlier kind of in this, this sentiment, like when it rains, it pours, you're dealing with all these stresses and everything. And then on top of that, dealing with mold and mold toxicity and myco mycotoxins, there's a, there's a cost factor to that. And, you know, how did, how did you, how did you fare with having to figure out the financial aspects of it? And, um, you know, cause I would imagine that could be overwhelming too. I mean, yeah. I've talked to people and they're like, I don't know how I'm going to pay for all of this, but I need to get it done. You know, I'm not feeling well. So, you know, how was that like for you? And, and what, what sort of, was it, was it a mental shift that allowed you to just overcome it all or, or, you know, what happened in that regard? Yeah. Good question. Um, mental shift. Yes. I was forced into doing something about it. Um, because this, the, the latest water leak was like a huge one. Um, so I had to do something about it. Um, and also because that was an accident, um, like insurance was involved with it. I guess in other ways insurance could have been involved, but I didn't think to file an insurance claim. I had like a water, uh, the water heater leaked all over the, bath, the basement floor. The toilet was leaking from upstairs down into my closet. Um, uh, the roof started leaking again got that fixed and then it started leaking again a few months later. Um, it was just like for like six or seven months, something happened. Yeah. I had another leak into my basement that was never totally sure where it came from. Um, could have been the dishwasher that was having issues and like pooling up or it could have been something else too. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so I'll spare you the details of every water issue that happened. Um, yeah, no, just... It, it, it's it's so, just um, figuring out the financial aspects of all yeah. these leagues and all these things. Yeah. It's overwhelming, I'm sure. Totally. So all of those things. And then, you know, the new roof, like that's not cheap. Um, yeah. I, my parents um, helped me out with that, luckily, because um, that was, I've got lots of peaks and valleys on my roof which now I know, like, not a good idea. <laughs> not a great idea, yeah. Um, <laughs> Looks nice, but not practical great, for yeah, water. Uh -huh. yeah. um, so, and then, you know, had some insurance coverage for some of the water damage repair, um, for a little bit of the mold testing, some of the remediation, um, and then there's the reconstruction costs. Um, which I still don't have paid off um, in part because the builder kind of disappeared and hasn't finished the job yet. So I'm not going to finish paying him yet. Um, yeah. So that was a massive stressor and burden too, is the financial piece. You know, like I'm not a wealthy person. 
or even close to it. Um, so to have this added on when, you know, finances are already like, you know, kind of a worry um, was just not great. I, I'm glad that it happened last year when all of these like stimulus payments were happening. Um, and I did get to collect unemployment for a little bit. Um, and so that like extra money, I think helped to offset a little bit of my worry. Um, and then the money that my parents loaned me a little bit of the insurance money. Um, but yeah, still have thousands. Well, I want to pay off. <laughs> I want to applaud you though, for the fact, like forget the mechanics of it. You made it happen. You figured it out, you know? And I think that's really powerful and important to, to, to recognize and acknowledge because, you know, some people when they're back into a corner, you know, fight or flight kicks on and, and, you know, like financial aspects definitely back people into corners, right? You were able to overcome the ba the barriers, the obstacles, make it happen, um, you know, get your, yourself back on that road to recovery. And I have no doubt you know, just uh, in, in meeting you for a few, a few short time here, you're, you're on your journey now helping other people. I have no doubt that everything's going to work out for you financially. So I just, I wanted to take a second to acknowledge you for that and, and being able to overcome those barriers and, and making it happen. And I'm sure that uh, your, your future self will be forever grateful for what you did. Thanks. Um, one, another thing that I will say too, because I, I've seen this a lot in all of the mold groups that I'm a part of on Facebook and all of the information I'm reading is um, when it comes to mold, there's, well, I can, I can go into this and it seems like a lot of people, like there's like an all or nothing sort of mentality, um, mm -hmm. like move out of your house th or throw everything away. Um, you have to do everything. And while that would probably be the best approach, it's probably not feasible or practical for many people. Um, Amen. And I'm definitely stuck in that place, which just made my stress so much worse, which then of course is going to exacerbate symptoms as well. Um, and finally, like I stepped out of that and I was like, okay, I can't do everything. I literally can't remediate everything right now. Um, so there's definitely, you know, like the attic, that I mentioned, like I didn't do anything with that. Um, but I did the areas where we spend the most time, the area near my son's room that was found later on that I didn't even know. Um, and, you know, some other big expenses like um, my couch, I probably need to throw my couch out. I love my couch so much um, that I just keep doing little things to try to yeah. like, salvage it. Um, and I think like, I probably don't do it as consistently as I could to really see if it's going to work, but I, you know, so I moved back in my house in March of this past year. It's now September. Um, and I barely ever sit on it cause I'm scared of it, <laughs> but it's a thing that I, like, I just don't have the money right now to buy a new couch. Um, and sure. nobody else has problems when they sit on it. Um, my mattress, you know, mattresses are a big expense as well. Um, when I moved back into my house, I couldn't sleep on my mattress. So I was sleeping on like a camping cot. Um, but what I ended up doing was um, I got like a full zip case, like allergen protector, mattress protector after okay. buying several other mattress protectors and I'd have to wash them like every two or three days to be able to sleep in my bed. And so the zip case seems to be helping for now. And I have a different mattress protector over that. Um, so that helped me kind of like offset some of these bigger expenses. And for the most part, I'm okay. Like I'm not having like these like crazy reactions. I'm not having like sleeping issues anymore. Um, some of my residual symptoms that are sticking around probably has to do with the fact that I'm sleeping on this mattress that I like detoxed mycotoxins into while I was sleeping before right. I knew there was an issue. Um, probably my couch, probably, um, you know, I haven't looked into my HVAC system yet. Um, I haven't bought a great air purifier yet. So I know there's all of these things that I could do or I should do, and I'll get sure. to those when I can. So that's really helped to kind of take the stress off. And also realize I was able to move back into my house. Things aren't perfect. 
I'm not feeling perfect, um, but I'm feeling a lot better. And so that's been helpful to know that I can just take it little by little by little when I can. You know, and it's, and you made a, you made a really good point. I mean, the whole all or nothing thing, it's been kind of thrown around in the industry for the last decade. I don't believe in it. I think you, you need to take bite-sized approaches to improving your air quality. I mean, when you look at a home, okay, the home is a never ending project. Mm -hmm. When you, when you, you just put in new windows, great. Now you need a new roof. You just put in a new roof. Great. Now you need a new refrigerator. There's always things going wrong. Yes. Um, to say all or nothing would just be impractical. It just is. It just is. Um, I think you, you, I mean, this is why I love testing so much because what I typically do is I say, I get this big report, 200 pages long. And it's like, you know, do, do X, Y, and Z a, a thousand times over. And I'm like, okay, great. We know that there's some mold here. We know there's some mold here, but there's a difference between 500 spores and 5 million spores, right? I mean, there's a lot more zeros here. So I would say if we're trying to prioritize on a budgetary basis, we're going to go after the larger ticket items. Um, and, and you have to, you know, you have to kind of look at the species as well. Like, you know, you're going to want to try to prioritize toxigenic molds. You're going to want to prioritize mycotoxin producing molds. But, you know, all in all, I think there's a way to get improvement just like you did. I mean, you're feeling worlds better today than you did a year ago, right? So it, you're living proof that it is possible to take these bite-sized approaches so that you're not financially overwhelming yourself. Cause look, I've been there. I've seen this, I've seen these bills where it's like, okay, to do everything in the report, you're, you're a six figure project and you may not be able to afford that. And that's okay, but you that's should be able to have, right. That's not even reconstructing and everything else. Right. And, and the medical side too. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it can be very expensive. So you know, it's important to realize, like, just hire someone who's going to do the right thing that that understands how to do it in what sequence, right? For instance, if your HVAC's in a crawl space and you're not going to remediate the crawl space, why would you replace the HVAC? I would clean it. I would improve it the best you can, but that should be done later, right? And so these are the types of things that you want to kind of deal with and prioritize so that at the end of the day, you're not spinning your wheels. You're not spending money twice. And you're really laser focused on targeting the worst areas that are creating the most contamination that's getting into the body. Um, so I, I love that, that you didn't do everything. Not that I, you know, want that for you, but just the fact that like, I love that this story is, is, is going to be, you know, Hey guys, I couldn't do everything, but look at me. I took control of it. I'm feeling better. I'm grateful for that, you know? And, and um, so thank you for sharing that. And this is, this is going to be one of my favorite podcasts so far, um, just because we got to cover a lot of ground here. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm running short on time, but um, really quick, you know, when you, when did you start to feel better? Was it after all this stuff started to take place? Yeah, it was when I moved out of my house and moved in with my parents during the remediation and reconstruction project um, that helped. And then, you know, starting to take some supplements, like I was taking N-acetylcysteine or glutathione and chlorella. Um, those things really helped. I had to go in really slowly with the chlorella, which is a, a binder. Um, I really could only do one a week. Otherwise I was just like blown brain fog. So when they say don't overdo it, it's true. Don't overdo it. Um, mm. uh, yeah. So those two, and then um, there were some, there was a homeopathic remedy that was really helpful. Um, probably six or seven months later, once I moved back into my house, um, called Ignatia that really helped with a lot of my like sensitivity to everything. Um, and a flower essence called Elm, which is really great for overwhelm. Um, this is really helpful for me and anybody I'm sure who's going through the mold process could probably benefit from that. Um, and then, you know, working with my, um, you know, belief systems around things like it's gotta be all or nothing, or I'm never going to get through this or, um, why am I so mad? Why am I so angry? So like getting to some of those things from like a psychological belief system level is helpful. Um, and then, you know, eating clean, um, that's something that I've already been doing. But I noticed that like when I would, you know, start to eat more like crap food, processed food, 
um, those things would really affect me significantly more. Um, so yeah, there are lots and lots of things that I did, but definitely those things awesome. are core for me. So last but not least, what would you recommend to others who may be going through similar challenges? And then if somebody wanted to connect with you, how could they do that? What, what's the best way to connect with you? Okay. So piece of advice is um, don't ignore the problems that you have and hope they'll go away like I did. <laughs> don't be avoidant. Um, you know, take action because even the, little, this, the littlest bit of action is going to feel so good. Um, even if it's just calling a mold inspector tester um, to see what's going on, that's going to feel really, really good. I cried when I talked to my guy because <laughs> I just felt so much relief to hear somebody who knew what was going on and knew what to do and was, you know, really committed to helping me. Um, so there's one of my pieces of advice. Um, and then how can people connect with me? Um, uh, well, my website is magnoliaholistichealth.com. So you can find more information about me and how I work there. I also have a online program. Um, it's a year long, low cost monthly fee program for $22 a month. Um, and it really covers the basics of holistic wellness um, from food to environmental toxins to um, the mind body connection and so much more. And all of those fundamentals are going to be helpful for anybody who's navigating mold illness. Um, and that's called mind body magic. Um, which you can find that on my website or reach out to me for it. It is mind-body-magic.teachable.com is the website. Um, so even though that one's not focused specifically on mold, um, the fundamentals are there that are going to help people to start to feel better in some capacity. Awesome. Kara, thank you so, so much for being here today, sharing your story. Uh, I know it's going to, this episode is going to be a, 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 just a, a lot of information packed in here. We covered a lot of great topics. Thanks so much for being vulnerable and sharing, you know, your story. And um, I hope that some people will reach out to you and connect because I think that you have a, a lot of great insight and a lot of great advice to offer. So uh, thanks again. Um, this is another episode of Mall Talks and uh, have a good day. Thank you, Michael.